Hello, here we discuss image formation due to a convex lens. Convex lens is a converging lens. And let's begin by part E of the problem where uh, we have to discuss a ray or draw a ray diagram. And that will allow us to check our answers from A to D by seeing the consistency with the ray diagram. So let's have an optical axis. This is the direction of light. It represents the direction of uh, light. So it's optical axis. And <clears throat> our lens will be represented by a straight line perpendicular to this optical axis for drawing purposes. We have a convex lens, which means our lens sits somewhere here like this. It's a transparent object. Uh, it's, uh, it's extreme, uh, extremely out of scale, but we want to show the spherical nature of these two surfaces. These need not have the same radius of curvature on the two ends, but effectively they have a focal length of 10 centimeters. So focal length uh, in lenses is measured positive in the direction of the optical axis. Object distance P is measured in the opposite direction of the optical axis and the image distance is measured positive in the direction of the optical axis. Uh, the way to remember this is that uh, objects are typically placed uh, like light tends to go and form an image. So light goes through the lens. So it is expected to form a lens in the on the right side of the lens. That's a way of a mnemonic if you want, but that's not conceptually that needs to be derived. So these will be negative. That's your negative image and that's your negative focal length. Positive focal length is what is called a convex lens, a converging lens and a negative, a lens with negative concave or sorry, negative focal length is called a concave lens, which is also a diverging lens. Objects are usually, object uh, are usually real and that's when it is placed in front of the lens, so that's your front side. And if it is on the right side of the lens, it will be called a virtual object, which is possible if you have uh, compound systems of mirrors and lenses. Image this, if it is uh, positive, this will be a real image. So if the image is formed on the right side, it is a real image. And if, if it is formed on the left side, it is a virtual image. This is unlike mirrors where everything was measured positive to the left and everything was negative to the right. Let's have a scale uh, on the top here. This will be our one centimeter height. But again, remember this lens is not, is only a, uh, a is that only for illustration purposes and for drawing purposes, we should rather use the right, uh, the, the straight line vertical to the optic axis. The focal length, uh, it's a convex mirror. So it is uh, positive. So that's your focal point. So that's your focal point. And that gives us a scale and that's your two times focal point. That's your three times focal point and so on. Similarly, we can have focal lengths uh, use the same length on the left. So that's your one, that's your two, and so on. Uh, an object is placed in front, uh, 10 centimeters uh, away in front of the lens that's on the left. So that's 10 centimeters. So we have, that's our image. Sorry, that's our object.
So that's our uh, object. And we have to follow two rays and the intersection of these two rays gives us the image. And in the case of lens, uh, unlike uh, mirrors, uh, or it's very similar in the case of mirrors, it is passed through the radius of curvature and the ray goes undeviated. In this case, it is go through the center of the lens, start from the head of the, oops, straight line, start from the head of the, head of the object and go through the center of the lens and the ray goes undeviated, which means that it can be stretched backward That's my so of course the ray starts from let me actually so the backward ray I would like to draw it using different color. So, so that's my reference line and again make it red so that That's starting from there. Okay. <clears throat> that's our first ray. So that's ray one. Second ray is uh, it anything that goes parallel to the optical axis converges towards the focal point. So go parallel. So it goes until there. It's Again, it is supposed to be within the aperture of the lens, but since we have an exaggerated version, it doesn't show it. So it reaches the lens, this whole line represents the lens. And from that point on, it converges towards the focal point. So that's again, have a reference line here. So that's I think I need it to be parallel. Okay. Now the actual light goes through. So I think in this case, I really need it to be parallel. So, so the focal point should be here. So the distances are not measured in the right spot. So let me erase this and let me have my focal point Oops. to be here. So that's my focal point. And let me have my reference line going back. Okay, that clarifies the ray diagram. It's not very obvious here where they intersect. So that's ray two. Where do they intersect? I pointed out that these are parallel lines, so it doesn't seem like they intersect at all. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's depend on the numbers uh, in, in this scenario. Let's go and calculate the numbers. A, calculate the image distance. So that's one over P plus one over Q is equal to one over the focal length. And we have object distance is 10 centimeters. It is to the left, so it is plus 10. Three six digits plus one over Q is equal to focal length, which is also plus 10. The right side. These two cancel out and this implies that, so this gives you a one over Q is equal to zero, which means that Q tends to infinity. 
and it also goes to infinity it could be plus or minus like we have to make sure where does it intersect it is not very clear if the object distance you are approaching so if p approaches uh, plus 10 from the left hand side so it is plus 10 plus small small angle delta let's be call that epsilon a small angle delta that means it is on the left side of the where the where the object is at this point in that uh, case it will be that would imply q is plus infinity if p were to approach plus 10 minus epsilon that means to say it will be somewhere to the right of where it is sitting here in that case the image is formed on the left hand side and it is minus uh, infinity so what is the magnification in either case so the magnification is a negative of the ratio of the image distance to the object distance object distance is plus 10 image distance is infinity so it could be again minus of plus or minus infinity over plus 10 which is a negative or positive infinity right? we don't know that what we will decipher that from the diagram very quickly but except for the plus or minus scenario right? so magnification could be plus infinity if it is to move to the right and it is negative infinity if it is formed to the left is it uh, upright or inverted? Again, if it is formed, like if we were to move this object a little bit to the left, that means the, these lines will intersect on the right side and the image will be formed somewhere here, right? Very large image to the very right side of the optical uh, axis, like then it is inverted. So if Q tends to plus infinity, it is inverted. If the image is formed to negative infinity, that means it is somewhere out there, then the image is formed somewhere here. So intersection will be somewhere there. So that will be upright. And again, one should be able to see the negative and positive. So when Q is positive infinity, the magnification comes to be negative. The negative number tells you that it's inverted. And when it is negative infinity, it is positive. So the sign switches, it's upright. Uh, uh, so that tells us the feature of, uh, uh, interesting feature of lens where you keep the object right at the point where the focal length is, at least for the convex uh, lens. Let me stop sharing here and let me stop recording.